Today is Richard Taylor. Richard, how are you, sir? Hey, sir. How are you? I'm doing great. I was thinking about the the last trip I made was to Charlotte, and uh, we had dinner. And I thought, oh, I'll see, I'll see Richard some more since I'm going to Charlotte a lot. And then suddenly, <laughs> no travel. Yeah, I think uh, current situation has changed a lot for a lot of people. <laughs> My wife and I the other day were just kind of thinking about, oh, when did we take the last trip? Oh, yeah, it was about a year ago this weekend. So, yeah. uh, it is uh, and a lot's changed in the last year. You've uh, you've joined Microsoft. Uh, I have. A little over a year now, is it? What's, have you Coming had your one-year on anniversary yet? No, not yet. Coming up on a year. It, uh, Ten months right now, so March will be my year. So getting well, close. Congratulations, <laughs> congratulations on that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, been, it's been a fun ride. Yeah. <laughs> I've enjoyed it as well. So I, I, I've been here seven years, and it's I still feel like the new guy. I hear you. All right. Are, um, what kind of things are you working on? Uh, let's see. Well, um, I am focused on actually a project, uh, actually internal service within Microsoft called MS Sales. And uh, in a nutshell, what it is is uh, the revenue recognition system for all of Microsoft. So uh, you can think of it as every transaction that's made uh whether it's direct or through a partner in terms of purchasing a product uh mm. it, it actually flows through our system um so you can think of surface laptops you can think of an xbox console or you can think of like an online uh purchase um it just all flows through our system and uh, we that's run a through lot it. of transactions it is a lot of transactions uh, i don't have an exact number i probably couldn't share that number, but uh, it's a massive system. And uh, at the end of the day, we, we run it through some business rules and um, and then we, we present that data uh, for consumption to our downstream users, whether it's downstream systems or uh, it, we have this interactive tool that our users can uh, actually query that data to help make business decisions. So it's a, it's a pretty, pretty important system. Um, we have 24 hour SLAs um, uh, every day. It's uh, we have to have everything published by midnight. Um, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's pretty intense. <laughs> wow. Okay. So this is uh, no pressure. You're you're no. dealing with incoming revenue transactions for a uh, multi-billion-dollar company. In fact, I just looked it up. In 2020, Microsoft had 143 billion dollars in revenue. Yep. There you go. Which is, and... It's almost hard to conceive of that much. Revenue. Yep. And the uh, the entire team at Microsoft, in terms of uh, making budget decisions and product strategy decisions and things like that they use our data um so it's it's pretty pretty important so yeah no pressure <laughs> yeah well i imagine this system has been around for a long time or some system to track revenues are you are you tweaking it are you rewriting it are you re what's 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 going on with yeah. that system now yeah great question so um it's been around for 20 plus years um it's been on various flavors of, of the technologies and platforms and things like that um, and uh, so it, it's uh, it's pretty central to uh, the, the company's operation. Um, right. And so uh, for most of that time, it's been sort of a combination of uh, uh, running on various uh, data platforms, specifically SQL Server was at the core. Um, most recently, actually right before I joined the team, about six months, um, Part of the uh, processing was moved to uh, use HD Insights um, on Azure, and so uh, a lot of our infrastructure has moved to Azure, um, as well as uh, from a reporting standpoint, uh, that used to be actually on-prem in a data center warehouse. Um, uh, hardware and uh, that actually moved to Azure as well. So now, um, what I'm specifically working on and my team's working on is uh, we at the center of all of this is a data warehouse, and uh, that's still an on prem platform right now. And uh, we're actually right in the middle of moving um, that uh, platform to a uh, equivalent platform in Azure. So, yeah, fun times. Uh, yeah, interesting. This is. Um... Tell me a little about the architecture. Is this a uh, is data updated in real time, or often when I think about <laughs> data warehouse, I think yeah. about some sort of batch processing. Something yeah. comes in yeah. here and eventually gets updated somewhere else. Yeah, is it more and, like that? Yeah, great question. So uh, right now it's uh, still based on a, a batch architecture. So we we pull 
uh, we we receive data from various upstream systems. Uh, we collect that data, um, and then uh, at a given time uh, um, during the day, uh, we'll actually start off our our processing uh, based on the files that we received, and uh, and we run that run that process every single day, uh, and it basically starts out with uh, some warehouse processing while we're actually spinning up uh, resources in Azure. So uh, uh, when we think about Azure and kind of one of the one of the concepts obviously between uh, around cloud computing is that you know you spin up resources that you need as you need it. So our entire system on the Azure side uh, except for our reporting platform um, gets spun up uh, gets allocated and spun up for each run daily. Um, and we're talking quite a bit of, you know, infrastructure. Um, so we spin all that stuff up while we're processing on a warehouse and then the data starts moving. Uh, it moves over to Azure. We run it through uh, HD insights for distributed uh, processing. Um, and then it all kind of comes back together um, for our and published to our reporting platform. Um, so every day it's like a Delta run. So you think of it as, you know, all the transactions we, rece we received since the last run gets processed and kind of added to the, uh, the the data on the end for the reporting. Um, and then, sure. one, then once a week, we'll reprocess everything um, from, uh, we call it a restatement, we'll process, reprocess everything um, from the beginning of time through uh, that current day. Um, and that's because- well, What's business, the reason for that? Yeah, great question. Um, it's because, um, you know, business rules change um, and, and how we recognize revenue changes. And so we want to reapply um, uh, that to uh, transactions that have previously been uh, processed. Uh, now, you also mentioned, uh, you know, other concepts around, or at least asked about other concepts around this. Um, so right now, we're also uh, working on with our business partners the concept of, you know, real-time data streaming. So a transaction comes in, and we'll actually process it through the system immediately and be available for reporting um, in a shortened period of time instead of sort of a 24-hour cycle. So batch processing, batch processing now, real time streaming at some point in the future. Um, I think the one interesting thing about the revenue of Microsoft is that um, I have a, an Azure account that I mm -hmm. pay about three dollars a month for, mm -hmm. and uh, whereas there are companies, there are large companies out there that pay probably millions of dollars a month for sure. what they're buying. Sure. Uh, is there is that a challenge to be dealing with both tiny transactions and giant transactions in the same system? Um, I don't I don't think the the size of the or at least the dollar amount actually impacts um, the, the the actual processing itself. Um, it's really uh, it boils down to the number of tra individual transactions. Uh, that's where you know the volume comes into play. So your your three dollar transaction, the one million dollar transaction, if we're receiving that you know once a month or once a week, or, that really doesn't doesn't impact the processing. Um, it, it's more about just the volume, transaction volume, which is which is huge. Um, we see data we see data change our data uh, volume changes changes over the month. So you know some some agreements we have with customers they they pay once a month. Um, and so we'll see those transactions come in, um, you know, at certain periods. So we can kind of we can kind of tell and, and adjust uh, for volumes, which we do automatically from the from uh, we look from the actual transaction volume. So what what happens is our system, when it spins up all these resources to to actually run, it actually looks at um, historically what we've done uh, either for that given day or a day of the week or even time of the month, and and it'll actually adjust dynamically, you know how much infrastructure we need to to build up uh, to actually run through our processing. So uh, yeah, it's it's pretty pretty interesting system, very complex, a lot of different technologies, uh, everything from ADF to SQL Server, HD Insights. Um, yeah, you pretty much name it. It's it's in there. <laughs> uh, what's the the biggest challenge in, in building and upgrading the system? I would say um, uh, we kind of like the team likes to describe it as basically changing the engine of the airplane while it's flying. It's <laughs> pretty much that's pretty much what we're doing. Right. Um, when you think about it, um, we have to still meet all of our obligations to our business partners um, and get them the data. And, uh, you know, so when we're thinking about like solutions and uh, so, for instance, you know, moving the data warehouse from uh, on prem to in Azure. Um, that's a pretty challenging task because 
there's only so much time that we have in terms of, you know, uh, let's just say, call it downtime. Uh, we can still, you know, receive transactions, but we st we have to process them. So we have to kind of figure out schedules and things like that. Um, there's obviously a lot of work that needs to happen. You, you don't just kind of flip a switch. Uh, we've got, you know, DNS changes, connectivity changes, configuration changes. I mean, there's a ton of changes that need to happen in a short window of time to actually make this happen. And so uh, so up to this point, we've been taking parts of the system and, you know, strategically uh, moving them. Um, and uh, it's it's been a wild ride, but um, but, you know, challenging and fun. I mean, that's that's what it's all about. You know, keeping it interesting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what is the goal to move everything to Azure eventually? Absolutely. First, first goal is to move everything to Azure. Um, we're on the last step of that, and then once we do that, um, then um, I know this term is heavily overused, but um, uh, we continue to modernize it. So we want to uh, move to more PaaS services. Um, we want to move to streaming, as I mentioned before. Uh, we want to leverage some of the um, the um, recently released uh, te technologies within Azure, like Synapse and some of these other platforms. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, at that point, once we get everything there, then it's then it's more just uh, continuing to continuing to evolve the system and making it more and more modern. So, uh, so how yeah, much of, yeah go ahead. <laughs> how much of an accounting background did you have when you started this project? Uh, me very little. Um, I mean, I, I I know, you know, some accounting just from, you know, leading teams and working with other managers uh, at other companies and, and understanding, you know, how we how we manage revenue and things like that. Uh, but, you know, um, that's about really it. No, no real accounting background. I'm, I'm a technologist. Uh, I, I, I just want to bring technology solutions to help, you know, solve business problems. That's that's the name of the game for me. Oh, well, is it? I mean, I, I guess in my mind, I was thinking this is an accounting problem. Is that <laughs> is, is that? Uh, uh, something you had to ramp up on, or are there other people worrying about that, or am I just wrong? Is it not really accounting? It's just moving data. It it is um, it is an accounting problem. Um, that I mean that's a business need. Um, but there are other people that are focused on um, the sort of the business rules and, and working with the accounting folks across the organization. Um, and then we interface with them in terms of um, meeting those requirements in code. Our, and our and our systems. Um, so you know, I've been talking about mo mostly infrastructure up to this point, but we we are actually in the software engineering team. Um, so you know, we we update business rules, we modify the extend the system for new products um, that are be that are going to be coming in with their associated business rules. Uh, I mean, it's just a it's just a huge uh, you know software engineering effort going on here with roughly about eighty. 80 to 100 developers now. And, um, uh, but, you know, uh, what I've started to learn, actually not started to learn, actually, I, I realized this a while ago, but I'm participating in it now, um, is that, uh, you know, as a software engineer, when you're moving to like cloud environments and things like that, um, you're getting, you're, you're getting exposed and you're actually responsible for, you know, the virtual infrastructure that that's a part of it. So, you know, we don't just write software and deploy code. I mean, it's it's building up the infrastructure, making it repeatable, um, you know, all the all the DevOps tenants. And I, so we have to get involved with that as well. And uh, and mm -hmm. so uh, uh, I'm not going to say that's necessarily new for me, but it's definitely new for a lot of developers on our team. They're like, oh, we have to understand servers. I'm like, well, yeah, because, you know, we're running in Azure and we're responsible for the code actually builds that stuff daily when we need it and tears it down daily when we don't so you you, you can't kind of you can't really separate the two so which is which is an interesting um interesting concept yeah. folks so i was having this conversation with someone recently that uh it used to be developers would do their thing and then the the it guys would handle devops and infrastructure things like that and those, those lines are gone now it, oh they are it's, it's really not possible to be a decent developer without having an understanding of devops having an understanding of uh, oh, yeah. what used to be the it pro rule oh yeah um, absolutely that's, which is that's good just... and bad <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it it really is. It's challenging. It is very challenging. Um, some some folks on like on our team uh, really struggle with it because uh, their concepts and, th and things that they just haven't haven't dealt with. Um, I'm fortunate because I, I actually started out on the hardware side, on in the networking side. I was a network engineer, and so bringing that and combining it with the software engineering side of things uh, makes it kind of natural for me. 
but uh but yeah it's it's a it's a challenge but uh but it's it's the requirement now um yeah you have to know it right <laughs> so um so yeah so that's kind of where we are as you uh, move this data to the cloud, I know you get greater scalability, but are, are there other things that you're doing differently because you're moving data into Azure? Uh, yeah, um, security. <laughs> that is that is probably the uh, at the top of the list. Um, uh, so things that's in, uh, that, that's harder now. I'm sorry. Is it harder now? Is that harder now? Um, yeah. To do to be make data secure because it's in the cloud than it was it, when it was on premises. I'm going to say it's. I, I will say it's not harder. I will say that you have to account for things you probably took for granted before. So a good example. Um, I've got two servers. They're in a data center. They they have a dependency on each other. They're communicating with each other. Um, they could even be on the same you know VNet for that matter. Um, one might not think of encrypting the communication between the two, right? Because you do actually have to physically walk into the data center and actually get on that VNet and, you know, intercept that data. In the cloud, you can't make that assumption, right? You you have to, uh, and particularly when we're, we're shedding down the resources and recreating them that might come up on different underlying infrastructure. And so you can't make the assumption that, oh, well, it's secure because it's in the cloud and it's in Microsoft data center. Uh, no, you really have to, you know, let, think about encryption and uh, uh, encryption at rest and some of these other things that um, you take for granted when it's when it's on prem uh, on premises and in in a data center. So it it's it's just m more considerations. I'm not going to say it's more difficult because there's a lot of tools that are already in place that. Uh, allow you to do what you need to do to make sure it's secure so Very great question though thank you uh is there anything that we haven't talked about on this topic that you think we should um i, I no i mean i think i think um i think we're at a point now just in you know um as technologists and in this industry that uh you know it's, it's a no-brainer that um you know cloud resources and leveraging cloud platforms uh or you know that's the way to go that's the that's the right call um for for a number of reasons yeah. obviously there are, there are regulatory uh you know situations where that might not be possible um but for for you know the majority of the situations out there you know the, this is the way to go and um you know it, it to me what i've experienced it doesn't really matter what scale um it, you, I, i'm there's there's always resources um, it's just a matter of understanding, you know, how things work, uh, accounting for some of the assumptions that uh, typically were made prior, and uh, get your, you know, you know, your processing and and resources into a cloud platform and go for it. Um, that's, you know, that's the name of the game nowadays. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, that sounds like a very cool project in yeah. terms of not only the technology, but in terms yeah. of the very real impact on the business. Yeah. So yeah. I'm excited that you're getting a chance to work on something so cool. Yeah, it is cool. It is cool. Challenging. <laughs> and thank and you. Cool. And I appreciate you sharing it with us. Oh, Thanks no for your time. No problem. My pleasure. Thanks right, for having me. Safe. Awesome. No matter how large your project is, technology can be your friend.